Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Glad that you are interested in our presentation of um, bringing your XML editor to a web infrastructure. We think it's the reasonable approach, and we're going to show you everything that we think you win with such an approach. Obviously, having the browser to access your documents comes with plus and minuses. On the minus side, I would say a browser, due to security, has less permissions to do things than a desktop application. And that should not be too much of a limitation. So essentially, typically, when you have a, an infrastructure where you have Exeditor running or any a web editor really, like you'll want to save your content somewhere. So you'll establish your system to say, okay, you can download this file and save it on your computer, or this is going to go directly on an online repository. Uh, X editor is not different from those in any sense. Uh, essentially, mm, let me just start with a with a very rough overview of what you're seeing so that it makes sense to you uh, when I go then in, into more detail into the functionality. And then I'll focus on this benefit of online, which I think is uh, manifold, but it's very much centered on collaboration, of course, like very much centered on the different actors acting with the documents and the different workflows that you establish behind that and not necessarily being bound to either emails back and forth or at least to check out of the document, check in again, and to these blockings that happen in between. Uh, essentially, um, what X Editor offers is a highly customizable workflow, uh, both from, from the point of view of what the users see. So here are a few toolbars that I can totally configure. I'll show you later how. Then there is obviously your document uh, on the downside, excuse me, on the down part of the screen, there's a breadcrumb that lets me navigate also exactly where I am. And on the right part, there are like more technical items like XML view of the document, uh, the attributes, table of contents, etc. Like if you had plugins, you would see them here. So the first thing that we like to emphasize about why cloud is the reasonable approach. And I reckon a lot of environments, a lot of ecosystem have already done this step. They have already gone cloud like be it Microsoft Office and many of your common tools if you are using uh, some other tools to manage your contacts, your deliveries, your your CCMS even. So it could already be uh, on the cloud. So what the editor brings when it's on the cloud, it's first of all, the ability to access your documents, obviously, from anywhere. So you don't need to worry about, oh, I'm using this on my other laptop or on my on my stationary computer or on my tablet. So you can access your contents from anywhere. Uh, the second one has to do with, as I mentioned before, people partnering for this exchange of information, this exchange of actions in the document. Um, good. For, I will address before user collaboration, some of the topics that are, I would say, the typical uh, worries from going online. First of all, will it be as powerful? Will it allow me to do what I can already do with my whatever? So Harvard Tech, XMetal, all these tools that have uh, kept the, the desktop app application. So, what we try to do is give you a view that is very much like Word or like Google Docs, so the one you prefer. So essentially clean 
for the author that he can just type in and do things as he normally does. If you are, or if technical writers are interacting with the document, obviously there is uh, a tag view. And here again, like obviously, let me show uh, the possible attributes maybe on a Okay, I wanted to show you on a table if the table was a bit more exciting, but it is not on this example. So never mind. Um, but again, like you would have all the interactions that you would expect from from a, an XML editor. You can even edit the raw XML if you're inclined to that. Um, the difference here is as opposed to with all the other view modes where we don't let you do anything that is not compliant with uh, your schema, we let you do it here for a while. So if you go here and you say, okay, I am, um, for example, closing the wrong tag here, I'm gonna take this on ordered list and add it here. When I try to apply this, it's going to complain. It's going to tell me, hey, it's almost like the debugging view of a, of a programmer tool. So here there is a mistake. I won't let you save until you correct this. I correct this, I cannot save my change if I had done any, which I haven't here, obviously. Um, so with this, we are sort of set for three different levels of interaction with a user. The other thing that, or the, the other question that raises typically is, how do you validate against your schema if you're on a web browser? So essentially what we do is we translate your schema into JavaScript so that everything can happen in the browser. You don't have to be making calls to your server whenever you add a node, a list, etc. These are all handled by the browser. Oh, I'm going to do it here. As you see, it's very fast. You get a placeholder anytime to ensure consistency as soon as you type something in it. Um, that would be for the behavior of your schema compliance uh, being on the browser. What happens if I go offline? Essentially, because of this reason, you can just keep on working. So you won't need to be online until your CCMS asks you to, for example, for a save if you are saving it to somewhere. Yeah. But what the document uh, has about consistency and about schema and XML, it does not depend on online functionality or being online the whole time. You can very well move on while offline. Mm, good. That covered, I want to say also that your document will be constantly saved on your browser. So you don't have to worry. As you can see here on the, on the, on the right hand side, I don't know if I can activate that by just typing, but Essentially, every now and then you'll see down here, document saved. So uh, this allows you to be at, at peace with the idea of, oh, I closed my browser incidentally, or I, I had some issue with the, with the browser, so your content will be stored. Um, the other aspect that I think uh, going online helps you really with is collaboration. With collaboration, we have quite a few of items or quite, quite some functionality down here, successfully saved. It was for a second there. So quite some functionality uh, that should help you collaborate with other users. As you see here, I'm writing as Emily Doe there are in this little demo just four users. 
Um, each one can obviously have their own permissions to do things. You can refine that even to like what uh, items I can edit or add, or if I can only comment, I can only view, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do for collaboration is track changes. So obviously anything you do, content inserted, if I remove something here, content removed. Uh, if I changed some format, let me go here, make this bold, format bold added. Something that I am not aware of other tools doing is when I do changes to the structure, I merge two elements. It's gonna tell me as well, or I expand my element into element split, yeah? So, Good. So that will keep track of all the changes, be there, be these changes from content or from the structure of your document. Next thing, obviously, if I have the right permission, I can just approve of the changes and say, yeah, I have seen this, that's good with me, yeah? Next thing, comments, I'm gonna, want to, I'm, go, I'm going to comment on the document to say, hey, this item seems out of place. For example, excuse me, how do I type it anymore? I'm not gonna retype that. Um, in comments, we have an extra cool thing. So obviously the same procedure, you have, if I have the right to, to delete this comment, to authorize this comment, I can do it. But also, and this is something that happens for or every user, obviously, I can say, I have seen this comment. So if you have a document where you've been working together with your colleague, for example, and both of you have been adding things and adding comments and so on, and you go for your lunch break with 100 comments, you come back, there's 102, you may think you have to read the whole 102 comments to find out which are the new ones. What we essentially do with this little eye is you can mark them as red. So they're not authorized. They're there for everyone. They won't be deleted until some user that has those permissions does it. But you can say, I have already seen it. I don't want to see it anymore. And then when I'm here at filtering comments, I can say, okay, show me all the comments or show me only those comments that I have not read yet. So that should help a fair amount as well on this collaboration. Good. The, there are some more exciting things coming uh, regarding collaboration. So obviously we see what's going on uh, in, the, in the writing ecosystem and not only the technical writing ecosystem, and we want to make use also of this online infrastructure. The last little thing, or not so little, but that the browser allows us to do is called lazy loading. So uh, lazy loading means, obviously it's not so much the case with data where topics tend to be smallish, so you won't be bothered by your browser being slow due to the length of your document. If, however, in your ecosystem, because you're not using data, you're in S1000D or some other uh, industry standard, you have massive documents, very long documents. Uh, we have implemented what is called lazy loading, which means if I'm at a position of the document, I'm not going to charge the whole document on the browser because he's going to struggle. What I do is I charge what I'm seeing and as much as I need for, if I do a few page downs, I'm going to be able to move like three, four pages very quickly. So I'm going to charge that immediately so that it's transparent for the user. But as soon as I'm down here, if I had a very long document, I'm going to start unloading what is on top and I'm going to start loading what comes afterwards so that the size of the document does not penalize uh, 
my user experience, the speed of my of my XML editor. Okay, good. Maybe the other worry that I would like to cover with this presentation is what happens if I come from unstructured content? Obviously, if you come from an XML document that has been generated in a desktop application, if you load uh, an XML editor with the right schema uh, and the right document, so it's just gonna open normally. And as I mentioned, like fairly quickly, um, what happens if I come from Word, for example? So I have prepared here a little document. I was on my way to sort of modifying it. I would like maybe to make some more spectacular uh, pieces uh, so that we can see it. So I have added here, underline, uh, title, You'll see that my word is in German, but essentially it's a title. Um, red, underline red, ordered list. This is just a larger text. So I'm gonna copy all that and just paste it on a, let me do it here because I know this schema better. Here, what happens? So let's unpack what has happened. First of all, you see my underline has been taken, my list has been taken, my underline in color has been taken, the color has not. The color has not because it's not in my schema. The title, I had modified it myself and made it green, maybe larger, I have forgotten. Uh, this is here away, so we just have taken this away, obviously. The large paragraph that we define down here is away as well. And the other little piece of information. So here, these, this schema requests that I start with a title. So I didn't have a title on my document, as you can see here. So placeholder is here to help us. So until I don't type title one, whatever. So it's it's going to be there for me so that my XML remains consistent, remains compatible with my schema. So that's something we are uh, very strong on always enforcing. Mm, I would say for going web, uh, maybe the only other item would be security. Obviously, I assume everyone will do this, but at least text editor allows you to either have it on, on the web or have it on your internet or running it on premise. So it's up to you and up to your standard security compliance uh, infrastructure uh, to have X editor be as secure as your CCMS, okay? Um, I would say with this, I have covered most of the topics that are relevant to collaboration. I think I still have a bit of time so I would like to mention a couple more things that haven't come up because they are not the main topic of the, of the presentation, but I think it's also nice and important just so that you know that in this effort to satisfy different levels of users, Xator is extremely customizable. Here I have two examples of my toolbar being tabs or my toolbar being drop downs. Excuse me. Yeah. You can really decide how you want your tool to look like. How we accomplish that is actually quite cool. I'm going to show with this mockup. We have the first two steps we have actually accomplished. The rest is a work in progress, but it's already quite enormous. So essentially, First step, you tell me like, what's your schema? I'm not gonna use a, a default schema because then it's kind of obvious we 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 have a, a X editor already ready 
to cope with the default schema, but tell me your own schema and I'll show you how we configure this. First of all, obviously a schema comes typically with different XSDs. So here we have to let the configurator know which one holds the root element. Once this is done, I'm gonna tell which, we call it roles, which role has each element. In other words, is, is B bold or is B a type of paragraph or is B an image? So we would do this for every element of the schema. I'm just gonna do it for two elements on image here for the sake of demoing it. So image container, that says your schema, that's fine. And then image big container and good. So in this case, we have two elements that are going to be treated as images. So we're not gonna display its content like the URL or the, or the file location. We're just going to fetch that and display the image and the accessible text, et cetera. Once that is done, let me skip these features for now. Let me go to toolbar, because I think it makes more sense. It's, it's more of a logical flow. So once this is done, I will become a standard toolbar. For the sake of the presentation, I have left image out here. So what I do is I add it myself. So typically, X editor will suggest a toolbar already, but in this example, I want a button that is not just one button for my image container, but I'm gonna make it a drop down button. So here, image big container, we're good. So I have added this button and this is actually what we see here. So it's, let me see image. So figure inline graphic. So these two image types, this is how it behaves if I define it to be a drop down list. Once this is done, I can also define how things look like. An image is not so exciting, but let me show you with an ordered list. So here I have a list. I see how much indentation I have in the items, how much space I have between the lines, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna change the kerning. So this uh, distance between the letters so that you have an idea of how much I can configure actually in every in every role that we define. And finally, let me come. So with this, you you kind of have defined what X editor toolbar. And so essentially the toolbar and the document looks like. And I think I can come now to this, excuse me, to these features that I left behind before. Essentially these are big chunks of functionality that you can have or not have, like multi-user collaboration. If this is one of the key benefits of going online, I want that. I typically will want accessibility change tracking for collaboration, obviously, table of contents, raw XML editor. You, there is a number of different things you can add. Um, once that is done, you can also tell X editor where you want to link X editor to. We have here our own tools, so files of Cloud and X Publisher, but obviously if you have your own CCMS, we use the standard points of entry, REST API, CA, CMIS, et cetera, to let X editor talk to it and make it nice. Uh, once it is done, I have essentially an X editor configured. So this would speed me, so to speak, this toolbar and this document configuration. So that's the, that's the first uh, extra thing that I thought it was worth mentioning. The, the other one is, I'm looking for one here. Oh yeah, here it is. The other one is in this example, here's a statement, but essentially I can just add one here. What happens if I have elements that are complex types, obviously that are mm, sort of a template that I want to use continuously in my document. You can also create a button to generate those. And if I go here and see what I have generated, as soon as I'm here, I have added all this chunk of XML. So, hazard statement message panel, type of hazard, how to avoid, etc. 
Again, placeholders. Everything, as soon as I type, they come into my XML. And regarding functionality, we can add it with this little button so I can here change the header statement from warning to a tip. You can see changes color here. So you can really define at leisure all the specific or all the specificity in your schema for your users so that those that want to deal with this can, but those who don't want to deal with anything technical can also work with it successfully. Uh, I have always seen these different views as, of course, onboarding more people to the content and to the tool, but also as a productivity issue. Like if I know that things happen as, as I expect them to happen, and I'm going to have a mark for my footnote, and I'm going to have everything nicely structured and so on. Maybe I am used to working with, excuse me, with tags, but I will stop wanting to do that because I have all the information here and it's it's just faster for me. I, don't, I have less information to read or I read it with visual elements instead of with text and tags and so on. So that'd be another benefit of having a, a modern tool, I would say, that lets you choose tax, no tax. Good. I think I probably have not used my 45 minutes, but I have covered all the topics that I wanted. I forgot to say at the beginning that um, you can write anytime your questions on the chat. Uh, I hope this has been introduced or not, this not being the first conversation. So I hope that that's, that's already, you're already in the practice of doing that. Uh, otherwise, I'm very happy to use this time to have a question and answer session and we can speak about whatever is left to talk. If, well, you'll hear me then live on the questions, but if there's nothing else, I'll be very happy to meet you on the cafe and tables and places in this nice conference or uh, afterwards in, in I'm easy to reach online per mail uh, or on a meeting. Thank you so much for your time and your attention and we'll be connected. Thank you, take care. Bye-bye.